We just saw Ivan Tony get slapped with an incredibly long ban from footballing activities and that's led us to look at the longest football player bans of all time. Of course, we start with the Brentford man. He was found guilty of breaching the FA's player betting rules. So, on the 17th of May, he was slapped with an eight-month ban from football. This means that Tony's really prolific season came to a premature end and he won't be playing football again until the middle of next season. Four years ago, we saw something very similar with Daniel Sturridge. When it was confirmed that he'd be leaving Liverpool after the Champions League success in 2019, Sturridge was linked with a move to Sevilla. So he told his brother to bet on him joining the La Liga club that summer. He was caught and banned for four months from football worldwide for breaching betting rules, and he was also fined £150,000. But he wasn't the first striker to get banned on his way out of Liverpool. Luis Suarez, too, was in this exact position back in 2014. At the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, Suarez bit Giorgio Chiellini in a group stage game against Italy. The incident wasn't caught in real time, so Suarez was not sent off. But two days later, FIFA banned him for nine international matches, the longest ban ever in World Cup history. But that wasn't all. The Uruguayan was also banned from partaking in any footballing activity anywhere in the world for four months. And when we say any footballing activity, we mean any at all. He wasn't even allowed to enter stadiums during this time. But it didn't stop him from securing a transfer, so he moved to Barcelona that summer and memorably went on to complete the European treble in his first season there. In this video, we've seen players get banned for breaching betting rules and for assault, but this next guy received a lengthy ban for failing a drug test. His name is Colo Torre, and the year was 2011. He was playing for Manchester City at the time when he failed the drug test and was immediately slapped with a six-month ban beginning on the 2nd of March 2011. Colo would eventually leave the club to join Liverpool in 2013. Colo Torre getting banned for failing a drugs test reminds us of a very influential figure at Man City right now who also got a lengthy ban some time ago for failing a drug test. Can you guys guess who it is? We'll tell you at the end of the video. But for now, let's look at Patrice Evra. In November 2017, Evra, who was playing for Marseille at the time, kicked a fan in the head during warm-up before a Europa League game. The Frenchman immediately got sent off, but that was going to be the least of his worries. UEFA charged him with violent conduct and then banned him from all UEFA competitions for seven months. Because of that incident, Marseille also terminated the former Man United defender's contract. We've looked at former Liverpool, City, Arsenal and United players. It's now time to look at a former Chelsea player. His name is Adrian Mutu. The Romanian forward was still a Chelsea player when he tested positive for the use of cocaine in 2004. He was slapped with a seven-month ban from football. Chelsea immediately terminated his contract and even sought compensation from the player for a breach of contract. Speaking of getting a ban for cocaine, there's a certain man whose name just has to come up. We're sure you can already tell who we're referring to, but we'll come to him later. Right now, we want to look at a former Man United player who got slapped with a lengthy ban for a very weird reason. His name is Rio Ferdinand. The centre-back, who had just moved to Man United from Leeds United in 2002, missed a drugs test. And for that, he was banned for eight months. No, he didn't fail the test, he only missed it. The test was scheduled to take place after training one day, but Rio forgot and left to go shopping immediately after training. When he remembered, he quickly returned, but it was too late. The defender later took the test and passed. He even offered to take a hair follicle test to prove that he didn't intentionally try and avoid the test, but the FA refused and went ahead to slap an eight-month ban on him from both club and international football. Ridiculous if you ask us, especially when you consider that Mutu was banned for seven months for testing positive for cocaine. Even worse, Christian Negwai, who was playing for Man City at the time, only got a £2,000 fine for missing a drug test. But it seems like the Leeds United to Man United pipeline knows how to produce some really lengthy bans. Another case in point is Eric Cantona. The Frenchman moved from Ellen Road to Old Trafford in 1992 and immediately became one of Man United's most important players. But fast forward to January 1995, 
and Cantona was in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. It was a Premier League game against Crystal Palace, and Cantona had just got sent off for kicking a Crystal Palace defender. But little did we know that there was a more controversial kick to come only seconds after. While walking off the pitch, Cantona just suddenly stopped and unleashed a kung fu kick on a fan in the stands. The kick was quickly followed up with some punches. We all saw that and instantly knew that Cantona would be out for a long, long time. And we were all right. The FA slapped him with a strict eight-month ban from footballing activities. The ban was so strict that he wasn't even allowed to feature in friendly games behind closed doors. Man United even got heat for playing the Frenchman in a game against another club on the training ground. On top of that, Cantona also did 120 hours community service and never played for the France national team again. Now we get to the OG who got slapped with a lengthy ban for cocaine use. Of course, it's nobody else but Diego Maradona. He was so incredibly talented, but he just could not get off the white substance. His consistent use of cocaine caused him to pay out about $70,000 in fines during his seven years at Napoli. All that then culminated in a 15-month ban slapped on him by the Italian football authorities after he tested positive for cocaine use in March 1991. He returned to Buenos Aires during this period and spent a short time in jail there. In the two cities where he was loved and revered the most, the GOAT received harsh criticism during this period because he was unable to curb his excesses. But somehow, Maradona's ban for more than a year is not the longest we've ever seen in football history. His name is Joey Barton, and if you knew this guy, you would not be surprised by this at all. This guy stubbed out a cigar in the eye of a youth team player, assaulted a 15-year-old fan, started a 10-man brawl in a friendly game, and even assaulted his own teammate, Usman Darbo, during training. He beat the player so bad that he lost consciousness and had a detached retina. He was arrested and charged for assault, pleaded guilty and was given a four-month suspended prison sentence, ordered to do 200 hours of community service, and instructed to pay the victim £3,000 in compensation. But it was none of those things that got Joey the 18-month ban. It was a breach of betting rules while he was at Burnley in 2017 that got him that insanely lengthy ban and effectively ended his career. The ban was later reduced by five months, but it didn't really change anything. Barton never played professional football again. Now, these are 10 players who have received really lengthy bans in football, but we promised you guys one really spicy one, an influential figure in the current Man City team. Well, it's not Erling Haaland or Kevin De Bruyne. It's actually the boss, Pep Guardiola. Yes, Pep was banned for four months after testing positive for Nandrolone. But here's the thing, he was wrongfully banned. He was eventually cleared twice, first in 2007 and once again in 2009. Apparently, the man was innocent, but he still served the four-month ban. But back to the Ivan Tony case. What do you guys think about the punishment? too severe or just perfect? Also, what do you think Brentford should do about him? Terminate his contract and sign a replacement in the summer or trust the other players like Mbueno and Wissa till he returns? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so that you never miss out on new content. And we will catch you in the next one. Bye.